guys, Anne Marie here with an 8.5 by 11 layout process video and sketch today. Um, I've also converted this into a 12 by 12 sketch in case that's more your speed. Um, and I've kept all the numbers nice and around so that these are easy to use. I'll show the sketches, you know, just now at the beginning, but also at the end of the video. And they will be posted on my blog with a link to that down below in the description box. So you can check that out. Um, I also have a stash busting idea today, and it's for gems. So using up your flat backed pearls, rhinestones, enamel dots, any other kind of bling, this is going to be a little idea to maybe make a dent in that stash for you with this technique. All right, so today I am using my January counterfeit kit from this year, and I'm doing a single photo. I do want to do it eight and a half by 11. Um, and since it's single photo, I normally wouldn't crop it. I would normally leave it as is, but as you're going to see, there's a little damage to the photo. So this is my way of kind of salvaging a pre-printed photo, even though it has some damage, so I don't have to print it again. I'm just going to trim it down to four by four. So what I want to do is I want to gut my cardstock. I like to do that to save on cardstock, um, and it also makes perfect matting cardstock because it will perfectly match the background cardstock. You don't have to really worry about, you know, your stash if you've only got, you know, like in this case, one off of this particular shade of craft cardstock. Um, but I realized I can't gut with my rotary trimmer because it, it slides. So it cuts the whole time. There is no starting and stopping. Um, I also realized as I'm doing this, I have to do it bigger than the picture. So I traced the picture and then I was starting to cut there, but I need to cut larger than the picture if that's what I'm going to use to mat the picture with. So um, what I'm doing now is instead of stabbing it with my scissors, I'm taking a craft knife on a glass mat and I'm just cutting a big box around um, the marks where I marked, you know, where the picture was, the four by four. Um, could I have measured this more precisely and cut it out as the mat, you know, immediately, like at four and a half square, and then just giving it a quarter inch mat all the way around? Absolutely. Do I work that way? Absolutely not. Um, I'm really just a little more chaotic than that. Um, so I just kind of do what I need to in the moment and move on and worry about it later, essentially. <laughs> um, and I, this was early on in my counterfeit kit, even though I'm just now sharing it. And so I was really cutting into papers for the first time. And I was really kind of going with abandon and I was just going with big blocks in big round numbers. So like an eight by eight square and um, a four by six. And I think this one's a five by seven. Um, just so I could dive right in, have a bunch of patterns on the page and get to creating quickly. Um, this is a technique that I've loved since I began scrapbooking to get three uh, different patterns, different scale with different colors um, and just kind of pile them on top of each other. I think Chamel does this a lot too. Um, and I just, yeah, I've always loved this look and it is a really nice way to kind of dive into papers and use a good chunk of them. So there I am cleaning up my mat so that it does have the nice clean corners. And um, this gutting an eight and a half by 11, this is like not for the faint of heart because you do kind of get close to the edges there, right? <laughs> Gutting a 12 by 12, in my opinion, is way easier. But something that made this easier was that piece of paper right there that I'm using first to cover that big open hole is cardstock weight paper. So it's double-sided heavyweight paper. Now I'm rubbing off like an excess adhesive. Um, but I, the next paper, that green one there, is super flimsy, really thin paper. And I would not feel comfortable covering a big gutted hole with flimsy paper. So, all right, so here I'm just arranging them so I can see, you know, a lot of the pattern and a lot of the color. And I just started with the largest piece, then I did the medium piece, and now I'm doing the final smaller piece. And this is when, you know, I knew I was gonna make it a horizontal page just to change things up, just to do something a little different. And I kind of knew I wanted it in the center since this is a road, a picture of a road, it's going to draw your eye kind of right down that road. And so I wanted it to draw your eye into the layout, right into the center. 
So um, I placed the four by six underneath that. That's going to give me a home for my title and it won't compete with the four by four photo since, you know, the four by six, four by four, those are really similar. If I put it directly on it, you wouldn't have been able to see most of that paper. So now I'm just using my sewing machine. I'm going to run two um, straight, well, not so straight, but on purpose. <laughs> Although I don't know if I could do straight on purpose if I wanted to, honestly, <laughs> but I'm doing two lines of stitching onto each piece of the pattern paper, just as kind of like a border treatment. Like I kind of think of it the same as, you know, maybe distressing it or adding a border punch or something like that. So I'm just making sure to hit each piece of paper two times with uh, my sewing machine. All right, so now I'm gonna cut the tails and just, you know, secure on the back with washi. I can't remember if I backstitched or not, quite honestly, but the washi just makes me feel better about it. <laughs> so I'm putting a little washi onto each little strip of sewing. So this is one that I knew I kind of wanted that photo, you know, it's a single photo layout. It's gonna be the focal point and it's pretty easy to put your focal point right in the center, especially again, when I have a photo that leads the eye so strongly, that's really easy. Um, so I put that down and I am thinking about how I want to utilize that journaling spot. I feel like I have a few other journaling spots that would work with this. And sometimes I like to stack them. So, um, I'm going to be looking for those. Um, I'm also going to be looking for the hearts in my kit because I'm going to be talking about, this is, you know, the road to the house where I grew up. And so, um, my heart's still there, you know? And I had some frames and partial frames in my kit that I thought I might use on this layout, but I didn't. Um, and you might recognize them from the weekly wrap up on Friday. I used them on another kit that was also about <laughs> where I grew up. So they get used, don't worry. But I decided to um, go a little heart heavy on this. That's gonna be my embellishment of choice. So I have some really old chipboard. I've got negative space chipboard and I'm just gonna ink it to give it kind of a soft look, um, to kind of go with, it's a slightly distressed or natural feel to this layout. Since I've got um, this picture of the outdoors, uh, it just seems right that everything's a little imperfect and, um, uh, not rough around the edges, but just natural and relaxed. And so now I've got those other journaling spots that I felt um, fit this layout really well and I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate them um, putting them in square it, it was too many square corners I felt like especially again since I'm going for a little softer more organic feeling layout and I already had all of these big blocks of pattern paper so I'm going to fussy cut around um, all these teeny tiny green leaves and yes I did question my decision making skills while I worked on this, but it was fine. Um, and then I'm going to fussy cut around all of the teeny tiny details and flowers on that yellow spot. And if you notice there, it's a little rougher going up than it was coming down on the other side. So now I'm just going in and I'm um, trimming the outside edge of the leaves off completely so that it's just um, it's only the inner leaves. Does that make sense? It's way easier to cut this way too. I did the side on the right first so I could tuck it under the photo if I didn't like it, but I liked it. So <laughs> I went ahead and committed to cutting the whole thing down that way. And I think that's nice too, because laying next to that, um, journaling spot with the scalloped circle border, that's like a bumpy border. And it's almost like you need a smooth border to kind of contrast with that. All right, so now I'm just gonna fussy cut here and I'll, I'll speed this up. So I'm just gonna go in and cut kind of a big cut around to cut off most of that excess paper. And then I go back in and get the fine details. I'm gonna go in and kind of cut um, the right-hand side of everything. And then I go back and cut the left-hand side, like cut into the left-hand side. So if I have a leaf, right, it's got two sides, a right-hand side and a left-hand side. The right-hand side, since I'm right-handed, is easier for me to cut first. So I'll do that first. And I might do that for a few pieces. And then I'll go back and clean them up going the other direction. 
Um, the only thing I didn't love about this is that I lost a lot of the yellow. So I'm, I kind of want to find a way to bring that back in, but I don't know that I, I do really. And that's the only thing I feel like was missing. I liked that color yellow in the layout. All right, so I've got that completely fussy cut out down to some pretty fine details. And I'm gonna decide kind of which orientation I like the best, how to get as much of it on the layout as possible, and commit to where everything's going by actually adhering it down. Um, but I decided, you know, I do like the photo being really poppy, right front and center, because that draws your eye down that road the best. And now I'm going to find a way to use my hearts that I have picked out. I really liked that little bingo marker though. So I move these around and I feel like that brown heart just kind of keeps getting lost. Um, it's just not adding a punch like I want it to. And the picture's really dark. So I end up going with the little black bingo marker heart because it has that little pop of really dramatic, intense um, color to kind of echo some of the shadows that are in the picture. Um, also my um, coloring on the chip chipboard was kind of fading a little bit, so I wanted to re-ink that. So I'm also committing to the placement on all of these using um, some glue dots. When you ink chipboard, or at least when I ink chipboard, it gets, you know, a little wet and it helps it to dry before you use glue dots. <laughs> um, because for me, if I've inked it really thoroughly, and there's even a little bit of ink, wet ink on the back, no type of adhesive will work with it, except I guess wet adhesive. But to me, that's a whole other issue with kind of wet flimsy chipboard. It can make it shiny and hard and I don't know, I don't like it. Um, but I went ahead and committed to these. I'm thinking, you know, visual triangle of hearts. I like using the three hearts. It's almost more like just a diagonal line of embellishments too though, since those two hearts are so close together. But I knew what I wanted to do. This is one of my favorite techniques with negative space chipboard. So, you know, the chipboard that's left around um, the main icon that was the focus of the chipboard to begin with. Um, I still like to find a way to use it. And I've done this technique before where I just pile up little gems um, inside the negative space. So I'm going to pile up little bits of anything I have that goes really. So I'm looking at rhinestones, enamel dots, flat back pearls, any type of gems or bling um, would work for this. And I'm going to put them inside. It's kind of like the idea of a shaker card that then when it stops being shaken, everything kind of settles and sifts down near the bottom or like sands in an hourglass, right? <laughs> but just kind of how they um, pile up at the bottom. And there's kind of a little, I don't know, just a little pile of pretty stuff right there. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I've got my final selection. I have some little wood dots, I have flat back pearls, and I have rhinestones. And I'm going to start with a big one right in the bottom center. And then I'm going to build up around that with varying sizes. Um, so I'm going to mix up the colors, the sizes, and the texture. Nothing exactly the same. I'm going to try to keep it away from something exactly the same, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to kind of try these out. I'm going to move them around and go back and forth until I make up my mind how I like it. Some of these are, I feel like they're too big because I want to fit quite a few inside it. So I go back and forth until I think I've found the sizes that I like. I'm also um, just using my scissors to pop these off the sheet, the very tip of my scissors. And then I, I hold my, place my scissors down in it and put my finger on it in place and pull my scissors back. So that's how I'm placing it exactly where I want it. And that allows me to kind of try it in a variety of places. The adhesive on a few of these, I feel like is starting to dry up a little bit. I felt like they were secure enough on the layout, but it's something I need to kind of be aware of because I might need to add a little extra adhesive. Um, it may not have been a bad idea for me to put maybe a layer of um, multi-matte medium matte multi-medium. I get that mixed up all the time, but the Ranger matte adhesive, <laughs> um, it may not have been a bad idea for me to put a little pile of that down before I added all my gems just to make sure they were extra secure. 
Um, and you can see I've started working on the little um, pink heart too off on the left. And I'm kind of trying to decide at this point, do I want to fill it up completely or do I want to go for that kind of partially filled look? And I decide that I'm going to go for a partially filled look. It would definitely be um, a cute look to fill up the negative space entirely. It would also be really cute to do that completely uniformly. So, you know, make an entire heart full of rhinestones or something like that. So I'm filing that idea away for another day because I like that too. And that's a great stash busting idea as well. I feel like, um, especially with this negative space chipboard, I think sometimes we've got items like this in our stash that have languished there. And so this is kind of a fun way to use them. So this is basically just, there was more of the same of me filling it up and I'm kind of acting like they've been poured in, you know, the gems have been poured in from the right hand side. And so that's where it's most full, but there's a little empty space on the left hand side. Um, I'm thinking about kind of collecting my thoughts, how I want to say it, and I'm going to add my journaling. I want my title to be the kind of the final sentence of my journaling. So I'm making sure um, that I'm spacing it in such a way that when I finish my journaling on this big spot, it will lead directly into the title, which is going to be directly off the side of this journaling spot. And so it'll be very natural for the reader to read the journaling and go straight into the title as the finishing thought. So now I'm going to build my title. Um, like I said, kind of right off the tail end of that scallop journaling. And I'm just, you know, looking for letters that kind of complement the feel and the tone of the layout. Since it is a pretty linear, clean lined layout, I'm looking at those sans serif um, fonts with clean letters. And, you know, I've got that little pop of black with the heart bingo marker. And so it makes sense to me to um, echo that with some black stickers. So I'm also you know, utilizing this final journaling spot to build my title on. Um, and again, that's kind of just another not so subtle, subtle <laughs> way to direct the eye through all of the journaling. I also kind of like how the writing is really small in the upper left hand journaling spot. And then it's a little bigger and further spaced on the next journaling spot. And then on this final one, the letters are the biggest um, and they're the most space, most white space around it. Um, and to me, that kind of echoes the shape of the road in the picture. So the road starts really wide and it narrows into the photo. And so um, this mirrors or mimics that kind of movement of wide and heavy near the bottom. Um, not really heavy, but wide um, near the bottom of the layout, narrowing up towards the center. It's just another way to... Um, kind of tie in that photo, fit the theme, all of that. While I was rambling on about, <laughs> about that, um, I kind of missed talking about this. Um, I was out of A's and P's. So I used a V and then a part of an F to make the letter A. And then I just trimmed off the bottom round part of a B for my P. That's a lot of uh, VBP. <laughs> It's almost a tongue twister. Um, I knew I wanted what the title was, A Portal into Passage. And so I had to make sure, just kind of going back, I had to make sure to build with my E from Passage first and go backwards. And then I could see how to space and add um, the little tile stickers that I'm going to use. These tile stickers are wood grain um, background. And so the brown matches perfectly with the craft cardstock with the gravel road. It mimics, you know, the wood in the trees, in the photo and the little wooden dots. It just kind of ties everything together. And there's my finished layout. It's pretty nice and simple and bright, even with that dark photo. Um, but again, I really like how it draws the eye in and I love all the details, the lumpy bumpy, uh, with the gemstones. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider you know, liking or commenting or sharing or subscribing. Um, and again, if you want the sketches, they'll be here momentarily. And then they will also be on my blog. You can find that link in the description box below. 
All right, guys, I will see you on Friday with a weekly wrap up. Have a great week.